we need to be asking how new candidate in vitro models can relate to conventional in vivo model systems or potentially exciting new in vivo model systems. They're an example of, of humanized model systems that, that look like very exciting new candidate models, and we very much like to include that within the scope. So that's a, clearly identified as a supportive goal. We're aware that drug-induced liver injury is very uh, complicated, and if you like, we think that a, a very useful analogy could be the situation in drug kinetics and drug-drug interactions. 20 years ago, uh, drug failure in clinical development due to poor kinetics or drug-drug interactions was a very common issue. Nowadays, it really doesn't happen at all. There's a really industrialized series of approaches that are used to eliminate the problem based on silico rules, in vitro rules, translating up to in vivo rules. We are looking to develop those rules for drug-induced liver injury. So we are taking into account the fact that we're going to have to bring in multiple parameters into play. Could be uh, physchem descriptors on molecules, could be a range of in vitro findings. Very probably this will build on the sort of uh, rules that are used in the drug metabolism, drug kinetics uh, field at the moment to properly understand compound fate and kinetics in animals. If we use those rules as a starting point and build on top of that cell-cell interactions and untoward toxic events, this could be a potential way to go, if you like. So we've captured this as, as what's now described as systems modeling, and we think that systems modeling, building these complex models, complex relationships, will be essential in the future, and we want to start working on that within the time frame of this program. We don't just want to have a series of in vitro or in vivo new models in isolation. We want them all to be pulled together, so we need to have a systems modeling component of this. And, and the, third, the, the, the final supportive goal is that we don't want to have just improved the way that FP are partners uh, design and select drugs in isolation from uh, the external community. We believe that we're working with public money and therefore uh, the information and the learning that, uh, that comes forward needs to be properly disseminated. So we need to have appropriate links across to the academic community, across to other pharmaceutical industries that may not be part of the FPA partner uh, network, and in particular key regulatory agencies. So th there's a shared understanding goal. And one thing that we are definitely very much committed to is a more sophisticated understanding of value and limitations of, of all the models that we evaluate. If we're not 100% successful and we haven't come up with the ultimate solution to prediction of drug and use liver injury, at the very least, we will have established the value and limitations of, of the models that we looked at. So if we communicate that properly, that will avoid people having to go through the same exercise again in the future. So that, that's definitely something we will do. We have a series of deliverables we've identified already uh, without the academic consortia having come together. So we hope this will inspire you to think of what reasonable deliverables are. This is where you have an opportunity to be innovative. Please view these as a guide and an inspiration. If you can improve upon these, then please do so. Uh, unsurprisingly, a panel of improved or novel in vitro assays which enhance prediction of drug-induced liver injury in humans, that's top of the list of deliverables we're looking for. We are looking for novel in vivo preclinical models as well. Uh, because we, th we believe that in vitro models will flag up hazard, but they will always be of limited value for a risk assessment at best, and in vitro to in vivo is going to be a key component. Ultimately, we're going into man in vivo, so we do need an in vivo sc scaling component. So there's an in vivo component that comes into play here. We need the models to be accepted for industrial use. Regulatory acceptance is a massive stretch target. We are not suggesting that we regulate on new models as we're developing them. We are saying that the regulators need to be aware of the work that's ongoing. If nothing else, we want regulators not to legislate inappropriately on immature model systems. And we think by having a full and open dialogue with appropriate regulatory agencies, we can ensure that the regulatory framework shifts in response to good hard science and doesn't preempt good hard science. I think there are excellent examples where good regulation evolves, and there are unfortunate examples where, where re regulation can appear to be premature because the science hasn't been joined up, and we're looking to avoid that. Uh, we're looking to deliver an improved understanding of how to most appropriately use preclinical approaches to replace, refine, and reduce animal usage. This is a very important goal. We do not want to work, be working in preclinical 
species uh, to assess safety in humans unless we absolutely have to. So replacement refinement reduction is a key objective of this work. And obviously uh, a key deliverable will be, will be new data and knowledge. We'll, we'll be doing a lot of work, we'll, we'll produce a massive amount of data and hopefully we'll, we'll derive some powerful knowledge. Uh, and back to the, the best practice guidance, computational models as touched on already, and data dissemination. What are we expecting from the consortia that are, are going to come to the, together? Well, we, we are expecting the consortia will look at what we've proposed, will agree that this is a reasonable starting point and that the items that we've identified are, are a reasonable indication of the boundaries we need to be um, starting to tackle. So we're expecting that the, the applicants will come up with proposals of work to evaluate and, and build on uh, our suggestions built around in vitro and in vivo assays and model systems useful for prediction of drug and use liver injury in man. We're all aware this is uh, multidisciplinary, so we are expecting that the, the consortium will be proposing multidisciplinary work. And we've heard this morning about the, the necessity to take account of the fact that FPF partners will put up significant resource and contributions to this work. So you'll obviously be proposing programs of work which will require you to do something and us to do something. So give an indication. And Richard and I will be available in the background, facilitated by Anne and... Uh, uh, and the IMI group to, to find a way to make sure that uh, people putting consortia bids together have a realistic understanding of, of the level of contribution we can make. Uh, small, medium-sized enterprises and technology service providers will be essential for at least parts of this work, and, and that's fairly obvious, and, and some examples here. And we have already um, identified on a previous slide the importance of having a good dialogue with regulatory agencies. We're not looking for a regulatory acceptance of these models realistically in time frame of the program, but we are looking to make sure that regulators are aware of what we're doing and the value and limitations of, of that progress. Uh, have I got that right? Yep, that's the applicants. Suggested architecture, you, you have an opportunity to trawl through uh, our, our current uh, guess at what a program would look like. You can see that we've proposed nine different work packages. View this as an inspiration. If you can find more creative ways to, to approach it, then you're encouraged to do that. But please don't miss anything out. And you'll see that the, the bullets that we've identified list some aspects that we think are going to be crucial components of any successful consortium. We're going to have to have evidence-based selections of selection of models to evaluate. We truly need to be objective about this. We're not going to evaluate our favoured candidate models. We're going to have a look at what's available at the moment. Dispassionately, a big list and come up with some criteria and establish which of the potential opportunities really merit evaluation and, and build up some, uh, an objective scoring system that enables us to, to pick the most promising uh, uh, approaches to evaluate. We are going to have to undertake work to evaluate uh, currently available in vitro assays. Uh, they, they've all got limitations. Some of them have tremendous value, but we'll, we need to certainly start with what's been described at the present time. We don't believe that the current in vitro model systems in particular will be sufficient. So we believe it will be very important as part of the work to, to improve and develop new models. And we're going to have to evaluate some of those new in vivo models. We've been explicit that don't forget immunology. Uh, as many of us know, drug-induced liver injury in man seems to have a substantial immune component for at least some drugs, and conventional preclinical experimental models really aren't especially good at looking at immune interactions. Are there things we can do that are smarter, better, more innovative? I would suggest this is definitely one of the areas where I would hope some innovation will come forth. Uh, this, the field is moving on, the, there are scientific opportunities that weren't available five or ten years ago. So be creative there, please. We will have lots of data that will need to be analysed and correlated and lots of stats done and we'll be building systems models. Many of the academics who are familiar with this field probably won't have a tremendous amount of natural expertise or capability in this area. Don't forget that when it comes to data correlation, statistical analysis, this is something that we do routinely on a regular basis within pharmaceutical companies. We're not doing the sort of creative stuff we want to for, the, for this new framework, but we've got people on the ground who, who can be brought into play to spread the load here, so you don't have to do it all for yourselves. Communication and publication obviously comes into frame. We've identified also project management as a particularly key issue. Uh, Richard and I firmly believe that because of the complexity of drug and use liver injury, 
and the fact we're going to have a number of potentially disparate worse work packages, uh, that it's going to be very important to manage this in a sensible fashion. We've already got, uh, I think it's now up to 13 FPA partners who want to be proactively involved in this. Every FPA partner will have a slightly different spin on it. I guess the big dogs in the academic community will all have slightly different spins on this, and we've got to synthesize this and come up with a project plan and deliver on it. It's going to be a big challenge, but we are going to do it, uh, and that's why project management has been identified uh, as a, a subtopic in its own right that, that merits investigation. Uh, if we were putting this slide together after this morning, we'd have IP down as well, because I've certainly learnt that uh, the, the IP issue is, is something we can think about. You know, background, foreground, side ground, uh, that's, that's really going to be very powerful as we move onwards. I think particularly specifying what's foreground for the work and what's side ground, because with drug induced liver injury, we could do a lot that actually delivers in the side ground, which gives everybody scope and opportunity while focusing hard on the foreground. What are we committing to from an FBA member point of view? Firstly, we are making a strong commitment. We have legacy data uh, on failed compounds, particularly, and we will make that available. You know, th there is absolutely no reason why we shouldn't. We have changed our philosophies, and we are going to be making that available. We will decide what we can make available, obviously. We're talking about... Uh, uh, certainly making key safety findings available. We will need to protect a level of IP, maybe around chemical structure, probably around some of the pharmacology, but that's hopefully something that uh, we can manage in, in the course of putting the consortium together. Because with very few exceptions, drug-induced liver injury is not linked to primary pharmacology in any way that anybody's been able to identify up till now. There will be some exceptions, but mostly it, it's not about primary pharmacology. And there aren't simple structure activity rules that have been identified yet. Chemical structures are something that will come into play later on because if we're really successful, we will want to build structure activity rules. But you know, we'll get there when we get there. We will supply compounds, and these will be compounds that have failed at various stages of, of drug development, and all of our companies unfortunately have them. And we'll also be prepared to provide information, legacy information, on widely marketed drugs that we know are associated with different patterns of drug-induced liver injury. I'm quite ashamed, as somebody who's been in the field for a long period of time, that there isn't a simple list somewhere of well-categorized compounds with well-understood uh, uh, descriptions of the pattern of liver injury, the severity of liver injury, the incidence of liver injury described in man for widely marketed drugs. I'm very much hoping that will be one of the deliverables that will come through as part of this work, for example. You know, we'll, we've got background data we'll, we'll provide to help moving that forward, and we'll, we'll be committed to, to moving that one onwards as well as part of the work. Uh, we'll bring in all of our expertise. We've got a lot of expertise. We, we, we clearly don't have the same level of individual academic expertise as some of the consortium partners will, will have, but we've got our own levels of intellectual expertise that we'll bring to play on all of this, uh, particularly informatic statistics I've identified already, and that will be available for experimental di design, data analysis, data interpretation. We've got robots, f pretty well every omics you can think of, and all sorts of fancy capability that is itching to be uh, applied to this project in an appropriate fashion. So we will make all of our high-tech capability available to explore the, the most promising avenues. That's a firm commitment from all pharmaceutical companies at the moment. It's crazy not to. And um, we will particularly be very happy to uh, undertake design and execution of life phase uh, evaluation of in vivo models when we think that's appropriate as well. And we'll, we'll undertake that work to industrial standards. <coughs> 